at 10 years, we did a report and I one woman after woman said, this was life changing. This changed my whole view of what I might do in the kingdom of God. And, uh, and others said it was inspirational and encouraging, but they weren't moving very far yet. Right now, crew has seven global vice presidents. Four of them are women. Welcome to the Eden Podcast, where we true the verse of Genesis 3.16, and we discover that God didn't curse Eve or Adam or limit woman in any way. This is Media Monday. I'm Bruce C.E. Fleming, Executive Director of the True 316 Foundation. Our website is true316.com. That's T-R-U 316.com. And we're the home of the Eden Podcast. Today, we have the joy of introducing a really good friend, very, very special friend. Joanne Hagemeyer is my co-host. And Joanne, will you will you bring us in and get us talking to Judy? Thank you, Bruce. My pleasure. We are here with Judy Douglas, who was mentored early in her career by Bill Bright, a charter member of the Fellowship of the Burning Heart. Mm -hmm. Judy describes Bill Bright as often saying, my heart is a flame within me. That is the fiery spirit Judy seeks to be filled with God's passion and compassion for the lost, the hurting, the needy, and the rebellious. Judy is the founder and host of Prayer for Prodigals, an online community for those who love someone who is making destructive choices, and Judy's book, When You Love a Prodigal, out in 2019, has become a podcast as well. She served as editor of two Campus Crusade for Christ magazines, speaks all over the world, and she's authored six books, including Shaped by God, Words for Life. And Judy is a fiery spirit for the True 316 Foundation, consulting often with Bruce and writing her endorsement for the Book of Eden. Mm. You can find links to her books, her podcast, and her website below. We're glad to have you with us, Judy. I'm so glad to be here. What an honor and a <laughs> treat. Well, Judy, we're we're th we're thrilled to have you with us and give you get you some uh, airtime on the Eden podcast. Uh, I love to listen to your podcast and. Uh, and I, I, I read, what was your magazine? You, you were uh, editor. At All Our Challenge was the main magazine. That's the, right. True Voice. Before that, there was the Collegiate Challenge, which was in the early years, a magazine we used on campus. Out of Arrowhead Springs, California. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're a, a professional writer from way back. And then you met a tall fella when you were writing there in the office. Who was that guy you met? Uh, his name was Steve Douglas. Um, he was had many different roles. After he graduated from Harvard Business School, he said yes to the Lord and became basically the growing leader of crew and took Bill Wright's place. Wonderful person. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we miss him. Yeah, I miss him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let's let's jump into our first question we always like to ask, and that's your faith story. How did you come to know Christ and grow in him? Well, <clears throat> I grew up in a church going, but not a, a Christian home. It was not a major part of our lives, but I had a friend. Um, her parents worked with Wycliffe, and this was in high school. And so she would take me to church with her some, and I'm like, yeah, I like God. Uh, <laughs> I had nothing against him. I just didn't know him and didn't realize I needed to. Then she invited me to go with her to a snow camp or ski camp in Colorado, sponsored by Young Life. And she said, there'll be cute boys and you'll learn to ski. And I went, sounds good to me. Uh, and so I went <clears throat> and it was life changing. The speaker talked for several nights on just what Christ had done for us and the cost that it was to him. And all my life, I had been about getting my own way. My sisters and my mother all would have agreed, yes, Judy always wants her own way and usually gets it. And so on the last night, as the speaker was talking, and he said, Christ wants to come into your life and forgive your sins and give you eternal life and show you his better way for your life. And I just went, what? God has a better way for my life than I do? Mm -hmm. And I said, I choose your way, Lord. Okay. Of course, the next morning, you know, that got questioned since I didn't get what I wanted. But that became, became 
kind of my life words was I choose your way. And if we had lots of time, I could tell you story after story after story um, of choosing God's way instead of mine. But we have other things to talk about. So, Well, you, you chose God's way. He chose you. <clears throat> oh, he did. And yeah. I'm so blessed. Yeah, he reached out to you. So then when we have the Holy Spirit in our lives, he gives us gifts that he attaches or sometimes they, they uh, increase the power of our own skills or things that we learn. It's just something that when you do it, it has a better result than it ever should have been. It's obvious that the Lord is in that. So I'm, I don't know if I read in, in Acts about the list of uh, the gift of authorship, but uh, you've got it. What would you say your spiritual gifts are and how, did, how has your ministry story developed? My spiritual gifts, my main gift is to encourage. Uh, but encourage means a whole lot more than make feel better or lift up a little. It is encourage people uh, to walk with God, encourage people to trust him with their lives. When I was graduating from the University of Texas, I was engaged to a young man, not Steve. I hadn't met him yet. And um and God said, I want you, I was working with Campus Crusade. That's where I had grown during my four years at, at Texas. And so they asked me to join student staff, and I did that. And then I really felt God saying, I want you to join full time. And I'm like, okay. So I told my fiance, we isn't it wonderful that we're joining Campus Crusade for Christ? And he said, I'm not. I said, yeah, if God's calling us. He says, not me. And so I said, Lord, when will you tell him? And the <laughs> Lord said, if you marry him, you won't be able to do what I want you to do. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was one of those, I choose your way, Lord. And that also meant giving up my dream to become a magazine writer and eventually editor. So I joined staff. I went to staff conference that summer. And then Bill Bright called me into his office and he said, you have a journalism degree. I said, yes. He said, we have this magazine that we're starting to go to campuses for the staff to use in sharing Christ with people. Would you consider coming to our headquarters and working on the magazine? I said, Lord, you have a sense of humor. Uh, I give you my dream and you turn around and give it back to me so much better. And so I, I was able to do that for the next 14 years and started another Campus Crusade magazine and helped Bill Bright write books. And, and so everything that I do slowly, you know, as you're growing, you you see more of God's pattern in your life. And my pattern became to help people become who God had made them to be, even as he was doing in my life. And I got to start doing that pretty young because I was editing two magazines when I was 30. And, and so it was beyond, you know, it was God because I wasn't really capable of that, but he made it possible. Yeah. Mm. Now, now, during that time, Campus Crusade grew dramatically. Yeah. It's from what? From a number of campuses in the U.S. to how many countries overseas? Well, now, I don't know when, I can't remember the numbers, but right now we're on, um, a lot of, we're in about 190 countries, I think. About 190. And it's not, not all campus. A lot of it's whatever is going to work in a nation. Campus is still our primary ministry, but we also work with leaders. We work with churches. We um, do a lot of things for, that are more specialized. We do a lot of digital now and that kind of thing. And you happen to know about those 190 some countries because you've been to 100 and 100 yeah, I've only been to about 75 of them. So, oh, <laughs> oh, I see. Only 75. <laughs> That's great. When you, when you endorsed the Book of Eden, you said something kind of special. I want to I want to quote you here. So I've got a copy of it, the book of Eden. And I asked you if you would endorse the book and you did. And I was, that was such an encouragement. You said this, I've spent a significant portion of my ministry life advocating on behalf of women in our organization and beyond to comprehend that they are created in the image of God purposely formed for fellowship with him, 
to reflect him to the world and to fulfill the good works for which he made them. So how, why, why did they need encouragement and how did, how do you, how do you think we need to encourage them today? Well, kind of in the same way. They needed encouragement because our ministry was um, pretty traditional and women were basically told that they stayed home with their families, their, their children, and um, could do things from there. But in our ministry, in the basics of winning, building, and sending, of doing evangelism and discipleship, women and men were trained just the same. And and they all got to do that. And so there was that equality. But I noticed as I was in charge of our publications department that we didn't have a lot of women leading uh, even at our headquarters, which is where they would have more freedom than being out doing, you know, ministry. It is ministry. But and so I just began to hang around with people who believed women could do more. And I read in scripture, I saw all the women that God used throughout the Old Testament. I saw how Jesus valued the women. Um, and I just began to believe that there was more. Um, and I read books and um, really just had such a sense that God had put on me uh a role to help our women believe that he could use them more than they knew or had been told. And so mm -hmm. I first started with the mothers because so many of them weren't finding a way to do what they wanted with their families and be sharing Christ and making disciples. And I, I wrote a book called, What Can a Mother Do? Uh, Finding Significance at Home and Beyond. And uh, so that, um, yeah, that was kind of the beginning, but over time, uh, well, I married Steve Douglas and he was in leadership and crew definitely lets, you know, I, it's like a pastor's wife kind of thing. But for me, I made it more than that. And my husband encouraged me all the way. In fact, he was believed in me more than anyone I know. He was always saying, you could do that. No, yes, you could do that. <laughs> and uh, I said, I don't want to do that. He says, oh, but you can like the podcast. But um, and so I just began to do more to reach out for our women and say to them, I started uh, writing a letter a week, a monthly letter that went to women in the U.S. because he was U.S. director first. And then as he became president, I had the whole world that I could seek to influence. And um Probably the biggest thing that we did, I and a few other women, <clears throat> was what was called the Global Women's Leadership Forum. Mm. It, a little work. <laughs> I raised the money, which was a gift from God. And, um, and we just said, all right, to each of our nations, we said, uh, depending on the number of staff, they got a percentage. They could have so many invited to this. And they could be the wife of the director if she was leading in some way. But this was for leaders or people who showed potential, which was most of them because not too many women were leading yet. And we brought 450 women from 90 countries to Thailand for a week and started out saying, we're starting fires here. And uh, we believe that God has gifted you and he wants you to use your gifts as you're a part of this ministry. And, and so we did all, we came up with a leadership framework and we did some training in things like strategic thinking and raising funds and communications and other leadership kinds of things. Anyway, it, that was the most, one of the most wonderful weeks of my entire life. It was like we were walking around that hotel in, in Chiang Mai, and we just you just kept thinking, God is smiling. His daughters are finding out that he's gifted them and he wants to use them. And so at the end, I said, this is for you and what God wants to do in your life. But it's also for the women back in your country or your part of the ministry or and we're at, we're assigning you to take the fire and be a fire seed to put it in their hearts to to let you do a work in them that 
they'd never imagined and to do a work through them that they just had never thought that was possible. Now, I'd love to say it just exploded. They did go back and we, the group of us that planned it would go and do trainings on a more personal basis if they wanted us to. We did 40 of those, I think. And, and some people, there was just immediate in other places, depending partly on the part of the world. Uh, some places were more open than others, but it took time. And we did a report at 10 years. It was 20 years ago, this coming March, that we did that. And at 10 years, we did a report. And I one woman after woman said, this was life-changing. This changed my whole view of what I might do in the kingdom of God. And, uh, and others said it was inspirational and encouraging, but they weren't moving very far yet. Right now, Crew has seven global vice presidents. Four of them are women. And I'm just like, I think my job there is done. Uh, <laughs> they caught it. And uh, it was huge. It was just, I still think that's one of, one of the most important contributions that God let me have in this ministry. And I'm so grateful. So you wrote a book, Shaped by God, Words for Life. And I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit more about what we would find in there. Well, it's very personal. And um, I I basically wrote a bunch of blog posts at first and then realized this is pretty good. Uh, but they were taking, I'm a word person. Everything I do is words. I play mm -hmm. word games to keep my old brain from, you know, disappearing. And um, and so I just took the words that God used in my life. And one of them is stewardship, for example. So I talked about how God has called each of us to be a steward of what he's put in us. And mm -hmm. in Ephesians 2, he talks about the fact that he made us well in, you know, in Psalm 139, he talks about he's there making us, he's forming us into the person he wants us to be. And he puts in us, he tells us in Ephesians 2, exactly what we need to be and do what he's already prepared for us. Mm -hmm. and, and so I talk about that in several different ways. And, and throughout it, I, I talk about the things that mattered to me. And so family would be one of them. And so how do you be available for God's call on your life, as well as be committed to your family and not abandoning mm -hmm. them in order to do your ministry? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that the ministry is God, wherever you are, I was in full-time ministry, but lots of people, wherever they are, God has ways to use them. And it's their calling, their responsibility to go and say, all right, Lord, here am I. What is it that I should be holding on to, going out with, seeking to take to touch lives for Christ? It wow. sounds like words to grow on for everybody. That's right. I hope so. That's right. So uh, Joy likes to point out to me that the True 316 message is not just for women, but it's also for men. And uh, I'm thinking back to, to Explo 72 when I brought a youth group and we went down to, to that incredible what was it? strip of land somehow underneath the power. The, the it's power a, it's tower. a freeway now. A freeway. Okay. So it hadn't been built yet. Can't go yeah. back there again. But uh, that that really had an impact on my life. And then when we went to France, we were using the the French translation of the four spiritual laws, and and uh, have seen campus groups. We had students at the Bangui Seminary who came up from Kinshasa, a husband and wife team. They were on staff, so every time we turned around, we were touched by Campus Crusade. And I kept reading your magazines. So oh, good, uh, <laughs> yeah. Thank you, we, thank you we, for that great impact that you've had on our lives. Oh, bless you. Thank you. What a privilege. I never get over. I never get over yeah. what God has given me uh, opportunities and, and possibilities. And, and he'll do the same for everyone. They won't be the same as what he's done for me, but he has the plan. So mm -hmm. I would love to see that happen. And then yes. God connected me with Carolyn James. And I'm not really a theologian. I'm a practitioner more than I am a real student. And um, but Carolyn, her first book that I read 
was um, Lost Women of the Bible. And I thought, that's a terrible title. Uh, <laughs> but the book was wonderful. And it was like, oh, she's she's saying scripturally what I have learned from God and what he's done in my life. And she and I became such close friends and together with others. But uh, we put on, I think it was seven conferences to tell women, you know, God really does love you. And he does have a great plan and he will use you more than you know. And we, one of the things I did that was such a treat was I scholarshiped crew staff from the U.S., mostly from ethnic minorities, but then from around the world, especially places I thought that they wouldn't hear this message. And also the uh, some real leaders I wanted to believe that God would use them more. And so I, every year for the last three years, I brought in these staff women from around the world to be a part of the conference so they could, so they could believe and say, yes, Lord. And you're referring to our interview with, uh, with Carolyn too, on the Eden podcast. So I especially like her, her Bible study emphasis on Tamar and Judah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, she's got so many written about six books uh yeah. have you seen the one on um maelstrom oh yeah, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. yeah but we'll save our episode with carolyn to talk about maelstrom okay okay yeah. <laughs> all right we've been we've been talking yeah we've been talking with judy douglas our really good friend from uh crew and from when you love a prodigal and six books and multi-magazines and lots of other things and uh, Judy's a real prayer warrior, too, and I appreciate that about you. Not enough. Yeah. We'll keep, we'll I keep, keep. I was the prayer warrior. But then after my husband went home to heaven, I was going through all this stuff, and he had pages and pages of people's names with prayer requests that he'd been praying for them. And I went, I'm a piker here compared to him. So. Yeah. All right. Well, we're getting, we're encouraged so many ways by you. Thank you so much. You've been listening to the Eden Podcast with Judy Douglas. Thank you so much. True 316 Foundation is the home of the Eden Podcast. Join us for $3.16 a month or more. Let's chew the verses on the key passages on women and men. Go to true316.com slash partner.